Hi, it's Kerry. Today I'm looking at some amazing wild animals, dinosaurs and a woolly rhinoceros. Can you tell me how many moose in today's video? Subscribe and give a thumbs up if you like animals. The woolly rhinoceros is an extinct species of rhinoceros that was common throughout Europe and Northern Asia. It became extinct about 10,000 years ago at the end of the last ice age. It lived at the same time as woolly mammoths. It was well adapted to the cold. It had thick shaggy fur, small ears, short thick legs and a massive stocky body which all helped conserve body heat. The large horn at the tip of the snout grew to be about 3 feet or 1 meter long. I decided after I made this video that I wanted to paint the horn so I'm going to show you what I did afterwards. So here it is before and here it is after. Of course we've got the before shot here. And here's the first member of the moose family. In North America they are referred to as moose and in Europe as elk. This one has some serious headgear. Moose are best known for their antlers. The male moose have antlers from early spring to late autumn. Look at all the twiggy marks on there. I really like these antlers. The antlers will drop off before winter but in the following year the male moose will grow even bigger antlers. I like the bell under the chin on this one. The flap of skin hanging from a moose's throat is called a bell or sometimes dewlap. It helps attract a mate. Bulls have larger bells than cows or females do. And here's another bull moose. The antlers are heavy and large. They weigh 50 to 60 pounds and grow up to 6 feet in width. The largest measured pair of antlers ever found were about 7 feet in width. The main purpose of antlers is to attract females and for fighting other males over potential females. Again you can see the bell under the neck there, under the chin. This is the female of the moose family. She's called a cow and she's also got that little bell underneath her neck but a much smaller one and no antlers. Moose or elk are the largest animals of the deer family. They can be found all over the North Hemisphere, mainly in the colder climates. They inhabit forests during winter and areas near rivers and streams during summer. The baby moose. They are known as calves. Moose can run up to 35 miles per hour. They are also good swimmers and will enter a lake to get some water plants to eat. golden lion tamarind. They are best known for their bright fur which is a lovely golden and orange colour. They are one of the smallest primates in the world with the average golden lion tamarind adult growing to just 20 centimetres or 8 inches tall. Not much bigger than this one. It also has an incredibly long tail which is often longer than the golden lion tamarind's body. Even though it has a long tail it cannot use its tail to grab onto trees and hold on. The golden lion tamarind is a small monkey native to the eastern rainforests of Brazil. The African wild ass. 
is the smallest member of the horse family. They inhabit rocky dry desert areas. They have black bands on their legs and a dark stripe along their back that stretches from head to tail. It has a big head with a narrow muzzle and long ears. The mane on the neck is bristly and stands on end. As well as having good hearing, the ears help it keep cool. The giraffe. They are found in the dry savannas of Africa, where they roam among the open plains and woodlands. The distinctive pattern on a giraffe's fur helps camouflage it and protect it from predators. The giraffe blends in with the trees and bushes as its fur blends in with the shadows and sunlight. Being tall is helpful for keeping a lookout for predators such as lions and hyenas. Their excellent eyesight allows them to spot hungry beasts from far away. The giraffe calf. Female giraffes give birth standing up and the babies drop onto the ground. It's about a one and a half metre drop. These infants are quick to get on their feet and within 30 minutes they are standing and only hours later they're up to run with their mothers. The African Elephant Cow. Both male and female African elephants have forward curving tusks which continue to grow throughout their lifetime. The elephant's trunk can grow to be about 6 feet or 2 metres long and has more than 40,000 muscles. They can swim using their trunk like a snorkel. The African elephant's trunk ends in two opposing lips whereas the Asian elephant trunk ends in a single lip. Elephant cubs are born after a 22 month pregnancy. At birth elephants already weigh 200 pounds or 91 kilograms and are 3 feet or 1 metre tall. The young calves are tended not only by their mothers but also by other females in the herd. Safari Diplodocus. I really like this colour. Diplodocus lived in the late Jurassic period and its name means double beamed. Diplodocus had a row of spines running down its back. Its backbone had extra bones giving it its name. These would help support and move its neck and tail. Its head was less than two feet with nostrils at the top of the head. It was among the longest land animals ever. Its front legs were shorter than its back legs. It had elephant like legs with five toed feet. Notice that large thumb claw. The long neck may have been used to forage for food in forests that would have been inaccessible due to its massive size and also for poking into wetlands to get mosses and ferns when they couldn't stand on firm ground. Tabajara was a type of marine pterosaur, a flying reptile from the Cretaceous period. It was typical of later pterosaurs in that it only had a very short tail. The end of its jaw is directed downwards at the front, much like a bird's beak. It had a remarkable head crest up to a metre tall with a bony prong which extended back behind the head. Tyrannosaurus was one of the largest meat-eating dinosaurs that ever lived. It was a ferocious predator with a thick heavy skull and a 4 foot or 1.2 metre long jaws. It had a powerful bite force capable of bone crushing action. T-Rex's serrated conical teeth were most likely used to pierce and grip flesh, which it then ripped away with its brawny neck muscles. Its two-fingered forearms could probably seize prey, but they were too short to reach its mouth. It's a superb model and you can see the scarring there on the face and I love the crest of feathers there and wonderful colours.
the skin on the feet matches the skin underneath the neck and on the underbelly. Draco Rex lived during the late Cretaceous period. It was a pachycephalosaur or bone-headed dinosaur. It is thought to be a juvenile pachycephalosaurus. Its name means Dragon King. It was a medium-sized dinosaur. It grew to about 13 feet or 4 meters and had three toed feet. It was a herbivore that lived in the woodlands of North America. It is easily recognized by its long, thick, flat skull with spiked horns, bumps and long muzzle. This model shows it had osteoderms. The snow leopard, such a beautiful animal. These rare beautiful grey snow leopards live in the steep rocky mountains of Central Asia. To keep warm they have thick fur and their wide fur covered feet act as natural snowshoes. They use their long tail for balance and as a blanket to wrap around themselves when sleeping to keep warm. In the summer months, snow leopards hunt goats and sheep and other small animals high up in the mountains. In the colder winter months, they migrate to the lower forest. And here's the little calf. Snow leopards vary in colour from cream to pale yellow. Their thick fur is patterned with dark rosettes. They have pale green or grey eyes and they store fat in their tail. The blue whale. These are magnificent marine mammals. They feed on tiny shrimp-like animals called krill. During certain times of the year, a single adult blue whale consumes about four tons of krill a day. They have fringe plates called baleen attached to their upper jaw. These act as a type of sieve. The blue whale swallows water and then forces it out, trapping the krill and then swallowing it. The hammerhead shark is a very unusual looking shark. They use their wide set eyes to give them a better field of vision. Their hammer shaped head has sensory organs that help them detect prey. It can even find stingrays buried in the sand and also eats fish, crab, lobsters and squid. Their mouth is located on the underside of the head. Thank you for watching my video. Please stay right on here at Super Fun Reviews for more great videos. See you again soon. Remember to tell me how many members in the Moose family today. And we've got another fun ending coming up with some unexpected visitors to the watering hole. Please subscribe and share my videos on any of the social media platforms that you visit. Thanks once again.